uh, something very familiar to people who've studied the Second World War history. The Warsaw Ghetto Uprising was finally crushed by the Nazis. Joining us now is the author and journalist Alex Gerlis. Morning, Alex. Good morning, Steve. So Warsaw Ghetto, um, tell us about that and then and, and tell us about the uprising then. OK, so the, the Warsaw Ghetto was started after the Nazis invaded uh, Warsaw in, in, in 1939. And it's a, an area in the centre of Warsaw. You, you can still see some small remnants of it now. But at one stage, around about 1940, Jews from the surrounding towns and villages had moved in. So there were upwards of half a million people actually in the ghetto. It was the largest of the ghettos in Europe by quite a long way. Um, but in, nine, in the summer of 1942, by then, quite a lot of people had died of typhoid and starvation. But over seven weeks in the summer of 1942, something like 250,000 people were deported from the ghetto to the Treblinka death camp. And virtually all of them were murdered within an hour or two of their arrival there. So by January of 1943, there were just 60, 60,000 people mm. remaining in the ghetto. And they knew it was a matter of time when the Nazis will come back and finish off the ghetto. And that, and therefore an uprising was, they had to do it, and it was suppressed brutally though, wasn't it? Yeah, there, were two, there was the first attempt at them, the, the Nazis coming in was on the 18th of January, and it, it failed rather dramatically because but in the intervening period between the summer of 42 and January 43, the Jewish resistance organisation, three or four different groups, come together and there were about a thousand fighters poorly armed but they'd made a lot of their own weapons and some elements of the polish underground not all of it um had supplied them with weapons and so they quelled that one on the 18th of january so the next attempt was on the 19th of april when about 2000 uh, german troops plus um, so, some other troops and, and police as well moved into the ghetto. And the reason it was the 19th of April was the 20th of April is Hitler's birthday. And they thought, uh, well, this is going to be done and dusted um, and it will be a birthday present for him because Hitler was bothered by the existence of the ghetto and the fact that it was that it was still there. So they thought, well, this will be nice. Oh, my God. Uh, the resistance are unbelievably brave people. You, you have a family connection to the to the resistance. Don't you? Your cousin Koza was one of the, the fighters in it. Yeah, Koza was his nom de guerre. His real name was um, Yitzhak Suknik, and he was 23 in 1943. And he'd been in the Polish military, so he'd been trained as a sharpshooter. So he had one of the, the, the few machine guns that they had. They, they had no more than about a dozen machine guns at the start of the uprising. They got quite a few more during it. Um, that they captured from Germans. And he's credited with something like six or seven kills of Germans um, during during the uprising. So he wasn't a leader in the sense that he didn't lead any of the units, but he's named in quite a lot of the histories as being a very active fighter. And what happened to him? Well, on the uh, you've probably heard of the Leon Euris book, Miller 18. Uh, and Miller 18 refers to 18 Miller Street, which was where the headquarters of the resistance was. Um, Koza was in the, an underground bunker, uh, the next door house in Miller Street, and a group of about 80, 12 of them escaped through the sewers. So the, the Warsaw sewer workers, some of them were really helpful in terms of guiding people out. And they took a group of about 12 of them out on the night of the 7th and 8th of May. But when they emerged on the other side of the ghetto wall, they were ambushed. It's a bit yeah. unclear as to whether it was German soldiers or Polish police. Um, but he opened fire and he was killed. Two of the people that came out survived. One died of their wounds, but a, a woman called um, Helen Schuppe survived. She fought, she went into the forest, fought in the Warsaw uprising the next year, and ended up living until not that long ago in Israel. Uh, well, that's, the, well, that's a great, great to hear. Uh, fascinating story. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us, Alex.